Samaratunga, Sri Maharaja Samaratunga, or sometimes written as Samaratunga, was the king of the Medong kingdom from the Wangsa at the time of King Samaratunga. To strengthen the alliance between the Sayalendra dynasty and the previous Srivijaya rulers, Samaratunga married Dui Tara, daughter of Dharmasetu. From that marriage Samaratunga had a son heir to the throne, Balaputredua, and Pramodawardani who were married to Rakai Paikadan, son of Sri Maharaja Rakai Gurung, the fifth king of the Medong kingdom. The name Samaratunga is found in the Kayumbungan inscription or the Karangtanga inscription. In the inscription it is stated that, Samaratunga had a daughter named Pramodawardani who inaugurated a very beautiful Jinalaya. This inscription is considered to be related to the procedures for treating Barobudur. The Kayumbungan inscription consists of two parts. The first part is in Sanskrit. Kayumbungan inscription is mentioned above, while the second part is in Old Javanese language issued by Rakai Patapan Mpu Pilar. Jinalaya is the procedure or guide made by the ruler at that time to care for sacred buildings. Usually Jinalaya is always related to Tana Perdikan, namely land or areas that are free of tax for the village or community around the sacred building. People who are tasked with caring for holy buildings are exempt from paying taxes. The area with special treatment is called Sima Swatantra. Almost in every new ruler in the history of the kingdom in Java, the ruler or king made a declaration regarding the maintenance of sacred buildings. If there are numbers written on the inscription that is when the declaration was made. It is said that the figure of MPU Pilar awarded several regions as self-help Sima to participate in caring for sacred buildings in a manner called Jinalaya. The historian De Kasparis considers the figure of Rakai Patapan MPU Pilar to be the vassal king of Samaratunga. His full name is found in the Gandasuli inscription, namely Dang Karayan Patapan Seputar Rakai Patapan Mpu Pilar Sidabusu Pelar. The inscription and mention of the term, kingdom. So, according to De Kasparis, Mpu Pilar in that year broke away from Samaratunga's rule. De Kasparis also found that, in the Kedu inscription there was information about the village of Gunter which was part of the Tana Perdikan Garung area, as well as the Patapan area as an autonomous Sima area. On this basis, Rakai Patapan is considered identical to Sri Maharaja Rakai Garung in the list of kings according to the Mantyasi inscription. Rakai Garung is the king before Rakai Paikadan, who is the son-in-law of Samaratunga. The conclusion is, Rakai Patapan Mpu Pilar in 824 was still the subordinate of Samaratunga. He has built his own kingdom and uses the title Maharaja Rakai Garung. His son named Rakai Paikadan Mpu Manuku married Pramodawardani, the daughter of Samaratunga, so he could inherit the throne of the Medong kingdom. This de Kasparis theory was rejected by Slamet Mulyana. According to him, the Gondosali inscription was issued when Mpu Pilar had died. The last title according to the inscription is Haji, which is the title for a vassal king under a Maharaja. So Haji Rakai Patapan cannot be the same as Maharaja Rakai Garung. In addition, it was also stated that Mpu Pilar's children were all girls, so it was impossible for him to have the son Rakai Paikotan. Judging from the grammar of the Gondosali inscription, the figure of Mpu Pilar is thought to have come from the island of Sumatra. In the Munduan inscription it is known that who served as Rakai Patapa was Mpu Manuku. Then the Kayumbungan inscription was held by Mpu Pilar. However, on the Bone Water inscription Mpu Manuku returned to lead the Patapan area. The conclusion is, Mpu Manuku initially served as Rakai Patapan. Then he was appointed by Maharaja Samaratunga as Rakai Paikadan, so that his position was replaced by Mpu Pilar, a migrant from Sumatra. For his services and loyalty, Mpu Pilar was later appointed as a vassal king with the title of Aji or Hajj. Rakai Paikadan Mpu Manuku successfully married Pramodawardani, the crown princess. He even succeeded in becoming the king of the Medong kingdom after the death of Samaratunga. Then after Mpu Pilar died, the Patapan area was ruled again by him. Maybe put together with Paikadan. Sri Maharaja Rakai Garung is the fifth king of the Medong kingdom in the list of kings according to the Mantyasi inscription. The Penging inscription also finds the term Rakrayanai Garung, but it is not known what its real name is. As already mentioned above, De Kasparis considers Rakai Garung identical to Rakai Patapan Mpu Pilar. 
However, this theory was rejected by Slamet Mulyana. Identification with Rakai Gurung based on a comparative analysis of the Gondosali, Kayumbungan, and Mantyasi inscriptions. According to the Mantyasi inscription, Maharaja Rakai Gurung ruled the Medong kingdom before Rakai Paikatan. So, the figure who might be synonymous with him is Maharaja Samaratunga, not MPU Pilar who only has the title of Hajj. So, according to this theory, before becoming king in the Medong kingdom, Samaratunga first served as regional head in Gurung, entitled Rakrayan I Gurung or Rakai Gurung. Relations with Balaputradua based in the Nalanda inscription. Balaputradua was the king of Swarnadwipa, Srivijaya kingdom, and the son of Samaragrawira. Based on the similarity of names, De Kasparis equated this Samaragrawira with Samaratunga, which was later popularized by other historians, such as Dr. Bosch. This theory assumes that after the death of Samaratunga, there was a civil war over the throne between Balaputradua and Rakai Paikadan, the husband of his sister, Pramodawardani. Balaputradua who lost then fled to Sumatra. Slamet Mulyana refused to identify Samaratunga with Samaragrawira. He argued that the Kayumbungan inscription mentions that Samaratunga had only one daughter, namely Pramodawardani. According to Slamet Mulyana, Balaputradua did not have the right to the throne of Java because he was only Samaratunga's younger brother, not his son. In other words, Samaragrawira is the father of two sons, namely Samaratunga and Balaputradua. Perhaps Balaputradua fled to Sumatra not because he lost the war, but because he did not have the right to the throne of Java. The stronghold of Balaputradua when fighting against Rakai Paikadan is thought to be on the hill near the Boko site. However, the inscriptions found on the hill state that Rakai Paikadan's enemy was a character named Rakai Walling Mpu Kumbayoni. The analysis of the inscriptions found around the Baka site was carried out by Paspanagoro and Notosudanto. If Slamet Mulyana's theory is correct, that Samaratunga is identical to the Rakai Gurung reign, then this figure is thought to have ascended the throne of the Medong kingdom before 819 Penging inscription. The declaration of maintenance of the sacred building which is currently named Barobudur and carried out by Pramodawardani the crown princess Kayumvungan inscription. This year Samaratunga is confirmed to be still alive. Then, the Kahulunan inscription in 842 mentions the character of Sri Kahulunan who has designated several villages as areas of cultivation to care for Kamulan Bumasambara, the term for sacred buildings, in this case Barobudur. There are two interpretations of this Sri Kahulunan character, namely the Empress or Queen Mother. The name Samaratunga is not mentioned in the inscription so he is thought to have died. At that time, it was estimated that the reign of Rakai Paikadan. If Sri Kahulunan means Empress, it means that she is Pramodawardani. Meanwhile, if it means Queen Mother, it means that she is the consort of Samaratunga. So in conclusion, the Samaratunga government is thought to have occurred before the collapse of the Sailendra house. Historians consider it to have started with the existence of religious differences between the Buddhist rulers and the common people who embraced the Shiva religion. This has contributed to the instability in central Java. To strengthen his position in central Java, the king of Samaratunga married his daughter, Pramodawardani, to Gurung's son, Rakai Paikadan, who was then the prince of the Sanjaya house. Since then the influence of Sanjaya, which is characterized by the Shiva religion, began to dominate in Mataram, holding back the influence of Buddhism. Rakai Sayalendra Paikadan even attacked Balaputradua, who was Pramodawardani's uncle or brother. The history of the Sayalendra dynasty ended in 850, when Balaputradua fled to Sornadwipa which was his mother's country of origin. The above note is the historian's current version, and should be clarified, revised. Is that true? After the expulsion of the Sayalendra dynasty from central Java, Munoz considered the end of Srivijaya's rule over Java for a century. Munoz thought that the Javanese, who were followers of Balaputradua, felt threatened and eventually withdrew to flee to West Java to establish the Bantangarang kingdom. This is based on the findings of statues at the site of Mount Pulisari, Bantangarang. Or the statues were already there before the followers of Balaputradua arrived, because the people of the island of Java have embraced the original teachings which are called the teachings of Shiva. Here historians seem confused in writing historical records, as they are currently circulating.
because they have considered the kingdom above adheres to Buddhism or Hinduism. The clarification. The teaching of Shiva here does not mean Hinduism, because Hinduism itself, which is considered Hindu in India, was only known in a century after the kingdom in Java. Meanwhile, historians such as Kaurabhajaraka and Bokhari believe that there was only one dynasty, namely Sayalendra, and that Sanjayavamka has never been mentioned in any inscription. Sanjaya and his descendants are considered to still belong to the Sayalendra dynasty. Here it is clear that historians such as Kaurabhajaraka and Bokhari implied that Shiva's teachings were those of the Sailendra house. That academic studies prove that Shiva teachings are not Hindu or the Sailendra house does not adhere to Buddhism. Traditionally, Sailendra's period of power is considered to have lasted between the 8th and 9th centuries AD, and was limited to central Java, to be precise in the Kedu plain, from the reign of Panankaran to Samaratunga. This is in accordance with Slamit Mulyana's interpretation that Panankaran was the first King Sayalendra to take the throne. However, the most recent interpretation based on the findings of the Sojomurto inscription and Sayalendra's continuation in Sriwijaya suggests that the reign of the Sayalendra dynasty lasted much longer. From the middle of the 7th century, it is estimated that the Sojomurto inscription was written, until the early 11th century AD, the fall of the Sayalendra dynasty in Sriwijaya due to the Cholamandala attack from India. Within a certain period of time, the Sayalendra dynasty ruled both in central Java and Sumatra. The alliance and marriage relationship of the royal family between Sriwijaya and Sayalendra made it possible for the two royal families to join forces, with the Sayalendra dynasty finally came to power both in the Medong Mataram kingdom in central Java as well as in Sriwijaya, Sumatra. Historians have tried to reconstruct the order of the genealogical list of the Sayalendra kings, even though each other may disagree. For example, Slamit Mulyana, continuing the Bosch twin dynasty theory, argued that the first member of the Sayalendra dynasty to become king was Rakai Panankaran. Meanwhile, Kaurabhajaraka argues that the Sanjaya dynasty never existed. In other words, Wangsa Sanjaya is also a member of Wangsa Sayalendra. Bokhari tried to arrange the initial stages of the development of the Sayalendra dynasty based on the interpretation of the Sojomurto inscription. Meanwhile Kaurabhajaraka tried to compile a list of the ruling kings of Sayalendra in the intermediate and advanced periods based on his relationship with the figure of Sanjaya, several Sayalendra inscriptions, and interpretations of the Karita Parayangan script. However, much confusion arose, because it seemed that the Sayalendra dynasty ruled over many kingdoms, Kalinga, Medong, and Sriwijaya. As a result, the names of several kings seemed to overlap and rule in these kingdoms simultaneously. Question marks indicate doubts or suspicions, because valid historical data or evidence is still scarce and not clearly revealed. We will clarify something else. Is it true that Borobudur adheres to the teachings of Buddha who was born in India? Let's look at the reviews and academic studies. Ashan Jinarakita. Bhikkhu Ashan Jinarakita, born the Bonan, also known as Su Kong was born in Bogor, Indonesia, the 23rd of January 1923 died at the age of 79 in Jakarta, the 18th of April 2002. He is one of the most influential figures in the development of Buddhism in modern Indonesia and the first Indonesian to become a monk after 500 years of the collapse of the Majapahit Empire when he was ordained in 1953. On the 17th of January 1955 he returned to Indonesia after studying, Dhamma, in Burma. For several months he spent Vipassana at the Mahasana Sasana Yekta Meditation Training Center, Rangoon. In less than a month, he made rapid progress. Ashan Jinarakita received special guidance from Yau Nayanatara Sayadaw, on January 23, 1954. Sramanera T. Chen was once again ordained as a novice according to the Theravada tradition and in the evening he was released to become a monk. Yes. Aga Maha Pandita U. Ashan Sobana Mahathera, or better known as Mahasi Sayadaw, became his main spiritual teacher, Apajaya. His teacher also named Jinarakita, saying Ashan himself was a title he received as a monk who deserves special respect. Ashan Jinarakita stayed in Burma for a while to further explore the Dharma and its meditation. His return to Indonesia brings special joy to Buddhist sympathizers in Indonesia. 
he saw that his history had been taught under the guidance of teachers from the Mahayana and Theravada schools. According to him, Buddhism should not be divided into different sects. From various studies of ancient texts in the book, Sanghyang Kamahayanikan, by Indonesian Buddhist scholars at that time. The most important exploration is the concept of divinity, in Buddhism which was adopted by the ancestors of the Indonesian nation. Single Hyang Widi, one of the great works left by Bhikkhu Ashan Jinarakita is Buddhayana in Indonesia. Bhikkhu Ashan Jinarakita introduced Adi Buddha Sanghyang as the concept of divinity, in Buddhism. The term, Sanghyang Adi Buddha, is stated as, God, in Indonesian Buddhism. So that, Buddhism is legally recognized by the Republic of Indonesia. After more and more Buddhists, and many students ordained as laymen. Bont Ashen founded the Upasaka Upasika Indonesia Brotherhood, PUUI, in July 1955 in Semarang. In 1979 PUUI changed its name to the Indonesian Buddhayana Council. Then, some of them questioned the doctrine of Sanghyang Adi Buddha, one of his students named Ong Tiong Biao was ordained as a novice and eventually became Jinaputta Bhikkhu. After the number of monks in Indonesia reached five, Bont Ashen then founded the Indonesian Sacred Sangha. In 1963, this organization later changed its name to Supreme Sangha Indonesia. When he became Anagarika, he came up with a brilliant idea to hold a national, Tri Suki Waisak, ceremony at Borobudur. Finally, on May 22, 1953, this event was successfully held. The original philosophy of the archipelago in the previous Indonesian archipelago was Dharma. Existed before immigrant religions entered the country, the Dharma, philosophy that underlies the Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism and Zoroaster. The full picture at Borobudur is perfectly preserved in Balinese culture, Borobudur is not based on a philosophy from India, but the teachings preserved and illustrated here underlie the teachings that have grown up there. Further clarification about the stages of construction of Borobudur. Is that right? Written and published like this. Borobudur Temple was built to honor Mahayana Buddhism. Dumarke opinion Borobudur Temple was founded in five stages of development, namely, Stage 1, 780, AD. Phase 2 and 3, 792 AD. Stage 4, 824 AD. Stage 5, 833, AD. The number of years above is the number of years in the historical record version which we must clarify. Borobudur Temple was built to honor Mahayana Buddhism. Is it true? Let's study and clarify academically. Bhikkhu Ashan Jinarakita is Buddhayana in Indonesia. Bhikkhu Ashan Jinarakita introduces Adi Buddha Sanghyang as the concept of divinity in Buddhism. When he became Anagarika, he came up with a brilliant idea to hold a national Tri Suki Waisak ceremony at Borobudur. Finally, on May 22, 1953, this event was successfully held after Buddhism was legally recognized by the Republic of Indonesia. The meaning Borobudur is considered or published based on Mahayana Buddha. At the time after Ashan Jinarakita on May 22, 1953 held a Vesak Trisuchi event in Borobudur. In the above explanation about the Sailendra house, the study and study of several inscriptions are clear that the kings mentioned above did not have Mahayana Buddhism. So, texts or sentences glorifying Mahayana Buddhism are abolished and need to be changed. Review. Is it true that Borobudur Temple was founded in five stages of development? In the text of the Dumarke opinion Borobudur Temple was founded in five stages of development, namely Stage 1 780 AD Phase 2 and 3 792 AD Stage 4 824 AD Stage 5 833 AD A study of the stages and years of development estimated by Dumarke. We will see who is in power and what happens in the year that is considered the building stage. Stage 1 780 AD Written from 775 AD to 800 AD, the ruling kingdom around Borobudur was the Mataram kingdom. The name of a figure at this time is Dharanindra, in historical records also ruling in Sriwijaya, Sumatra, attacking and conquering Ligur and South Cambodia, Chenla, 790. Inscription records at this time are the Caloric inscription, 782, the Ligur B inscription, circa 787. Dharanindra. Dharanindra is the king of the Sailendra dynasty in Java. 
His name is found in the caloric inscription with the title Sri Sangrama Dhananjaya. Managed to expand its territory to the Malay Peninsula and the Indochina mainland. Historian Slamet Mulyana calls Dharanindra identical to Sri Maharaja Rakai Panangalan, the third king of the Medong Kingdom in the Central Java period, or the ancient Mataram Kingdom. In the Ligar inscription, this inscription has two sides, contains the term Saruwe Madamathana. According to the historian George Codes, this term was coined by Maharaja Wizanu. According to Slamet Mulyana Dararindra's theory as the king of Java, he had succeeded in conquering the Srivijaya kingdom including its vassal areas on the Malay Peninsula. The Ligar inscription is an inscription that praises himself as the incarnation of Wisnu. There is a difference in understanding between the historian's codes and Slamet in the sense of Maharaja Vishnu. That is, the assumption of Maharaja Vishnu as the father and Maharaja Vishnu to be himself Dararindra. What is a big note in the discussion above is the word Wisnu. In Buddhism, the word Vishnu is not found. Said Vishnu. Words that are always familiar with Shiva, namely the original understanding and philosophy of the archipelago. The wise teachings of the light giver, namely the wise teachings of the sun with Shiva as its manifestation, this symbol is depicted on the symbol of the Majapahit kingdom. Here it is. Dharmic original. This is the original teaching of the previous Indonesian archipelago which until now is perfectly preserved in Bali and depicted in Barobudur. Listed in the Ba relief which is now covered with word literacy text. Kusala Dharma Bhajana. Here it is clear that Raja Dharanindra, the king of the Sailendra dynasty in Java adheres to the original teachings of the archipelago. So, how a king will build a temple which is considered a Buddhist temple while he himself is a follower of Shiva's teachings, let alone know from his inscription about self-praise praise is clearly visible. The conclusion that can be drawn from King Dharanindra is. He is a follower of Shiva's teachings known as Vishnu, this is the original Dharmak. And Buddha existed before the Sailendra house existed. This is a place of worship and even a monument to the Shiva religion, namely the original religion of the archipelago, the teachings of the wisdom, the light of the teachings of the sun as the Kivla with Shiva as the manifestation. King Dharanindra is clearly not Buddhist, let alone Hindu. Dharanindra adheres to teachings that existed before the kingdom existed. Buddha, which is in the royal area, is an existing building. With the thought that a magnificent building like Buddha and full of religious nuances certainly indicates that the building has been around for a long time. King Dharanindra did not start building Barobudur. With reason. If at that time the king started building Barobudur, of course the name of the designer or architect would be known. There is a name and the architect must be recorded. If at that time Dharanindra initiated the construction of Barobudur, of course and certainly many buildings recorded were built during his time and recorded what buildings were built. Of course this will be recorded and listed in the inscription. Given the writings on the Ligar inscription which are considered to be made by Dararindra which clearly contain praise for himself, and if it is true that Barobudur was initiated by him, of course the name and building will be recorded or the inscription made. We will see the caloric inscription whether there is anything in this inscription that supports the construction of the first stage of Barobudur by King Dararindra. The caloric inscription is a written inscription of the number 704 Saka written in Sanskrit with the Pranagari script, found near the temple barn in Caloric village located not far north of Prambanan, central Java, Indonesia. The writings on the inscription were found in poor condition with some parts that were indistinct and illegible, historians could only translate the main information of the inscription. The inscription mentions the sacred building for the Manjusri statue which houses wisdom, Dharma, and Sangha, Trinity same as Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshvara. The maintenance of this sacred building was ordered by Raja Indra, honored by its official name Sri Sangramadananjaya. Reference to these deities denotes Tantrayana, Vajrayana. The temple dedicated to Manjusri is identified as Kandi Siwu, which is located not far to the north from the Prambanan temple. Currently the inscription is displayed at the National Museum of Indonesia, Jakarta, with inventory number No. D.44. In the explanation above, Prasasti Kaloric contains key words, including Manjusri, Vajrayana, Tantrayana, Sangha, Brahma, Wisnu, Maheshvara, Dharma. So, conclusion on the Kaloric inscription. 
It is not appropriate if the term is considered as a support to show that the Sailendra written on the inscription adheres to Mahayana Buddhism, because Vajrayana is part of Mahayana. And Mahayana Buddhists in the year Sailendra came to power did not reach the archipelago. In the above note Mahayana Buddhist teachings only developed in India before the 1200 AD century. The Chinese who came to the archipelago was Baixu It Xing, namely in the 7th to 8th century AD. At that time, I visited the Indonesian archipelago earlier to study, see, record original Dharmic teachings. Not bringing Buddhist teachings from their country and then spreading them to the archipelago. The exact location in Sumatra is at the estuary Takas site. On the Caloric inscription, it does not appear that the large building of Borobudur is written, and it tends to be the Prambanan building. So, the king of Mataram Dararindra never initiated or started to build Borobudur, according to the analysis on the Ligur and Caloric inscriptions. In the sentences that have been circulating so far, namely, the inscription mentions the Holy Buddha to house the Manjusri statue which contains the wisdom of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, Trinity same as Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshvara. It is a misnomer. Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha in the Buddhist sense are different from what is called doctrine, Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshvara. What is in the view of Hinduism in this case is the Shiva religion which is called at that time. The two inscriptions mentioned above do not prove that. Borobudur was built by Dararindra, even strengthening that the inscription characterizes the teachings of Shiva, that is, the teachings that underlie the formation of Buddhism, Jainism and Hinduism are original dharmics. We will see who is in power and what happens in what is considered the next building stage. Stage 2 and 3 are considered are written in 792 AD. In 792 AD, the ruling kingdom around Borobudur was the Mataram kingdom, the name of the figure at this time was Dharanindra. We will see who is in power and what happens in the year that is considered the building stage. Stage 4 824 AD. In 824 AD, the ruling kingdom around Borobudur was the Mataram kingdom, the name of the figure at this time was Samaragrawira, also in power in Sriwijaya, Sumatra. Freed themselves in the year 802 AD. The inscription records at this time are the Ligur B inscription around the year 787 AD. The key word is Samaragrawira. Based in the Kayumbungan inscription 824 AD, Samaragrawira had a son Samaratunga and he had a daughter Pramawardani. Of course has a philosophy that is not different from its predecessors, namely the original understanding and philosophy of the archipelago, original Dharmic. The wise teachings of the light giver, namely the wise teachings of the sun with Shiva as its manifestation which historians call the teachings of Shiva to distinguish from Hindu teachings in the 19th century AD, also not cultural. Actually this is the original Dharmic. Kayumbungan inscription. Kayumbungan inscription is an inscription on five pieces of rock found in Karong Tenga hamlet, Tamangang Regency, Central Java. This inscription is written in Old Javanese script by using two languages. The first line to 24 in Sanskrit, written Samaratunga with his son Pramodawardhani, as king and son. The sentence line in Old Javanese says that at 10 Krenapaks a month Jayas the year 746 Saka. Rakai Padapan Pupalar inaugurated the rice fields in Kayumbungan village to become Sima land or Perdikan land for tax-free areas. Also written sentences Jinalaya, Wenuwana and implied the meaning of a place to place the ashes of, King Indra. Pay attention for us to examine. On this line is written the sentence Jinalaya, Wenuwana. Why is this section written in Javanese or local languages? He replied. Because this is intended for local people who will treat. So the definition of Jinalaya is the procedure for caring not building. Because if interpreted as building, the word Wenuwana or bamboo forest describes the position or place of the existing temple. King Indra is a term with respect to kings who will die and their ashes will be placed in a sacred building. The word, Indra, has the meaning of light, which is the personification of a human being who performs devotion and symbolizes the representative of the light giver, namely the sun. The essence of the contents of the Kayumbungan inscription are the declaration of care for Kamulan Bhumashambara by MPU Pilar or Samaratunga to his successor Pramodawardhani to do the same thing that his father did, namely taking care of sacred buildings. 
By establishing SEMA Swadantra, the current language is SOP, Standard of Procedure for the Maintenance or Maintenance of Sacred Buildings. By awarding several villages to care for Kamul and Dumashambara. MPU Pilar or Samaratunga also designates Jinalaya. Jinalaya is the term for processions or procedures for caring for sacred buildings. In the discussion of the year which is considered as stage 4 of Borobudur development, namely the year 824 AD, and the inscription with the number of years is the Kayumvungan inscription, it is proven that the inscription does not explain the construction of Borobudur. In fact, it is clear that the inscription is a declaration of care and not building. We will see who is in power and what happens in the year that is considered the building stage. Stage 5833 AD. The ruling kingdom around Borobudur is the Mataram kingdom, the name of the figure at this time is Samaratunga, also in power in Sriwijaya, Sumatra, in a record of its power ending in 833 AD. The inscription records at this time are the Karang Tenga or Kayumvungan inscription. The ruling kingdom around Borobudur is the Mataram kingdom. The name of a character at this time is Pramodawardani in power to accompany her husband Rakai Paikadan. Also in power in Sriwijaya, Sumatra, in a record of defeating and driving Balaputredu out of town to Sumatra, Sriwijaya. The inscription records at this time are the Suwagra inscription. The key words are Samaratunga, Kayumbungan inscription, Pramodawardani, Suwagra inscription. Let's take a look and pay attention to the bold words above. Is it true that in that year the names of these figures and inscriptions prove that Borobudur was built and ended at that stage and year? The name Samaratunga is found in the Kayumvungan inscription or the Karangtanga inscription. Almost in every new ruler in the history of the kingdom in Java, the ruler or king made a declaration regarding the maintenance of sacred buildings. If there are numbers written on the inscription that is when the declaration was made. In the inscription it is stated that, Samaratunga had a daughter named Pramodawardani who inaugurated the Jinalaya. The Kayumvungan inscription consists of two parts. The first part is in Sanskrit as mentioned above, while the second part is in Old Javanese language issued by Rakai Patapan Mpu Pilar. Jinalaya, is the procedure or guide made by the ruler at that time to care for sacred buildings. Jinalaya is related to Tana Perdikan, namely land or areas that are free of tax for the community around the sacred building. People who are tasked with caring for holy buildings are exempt from paying taxes. The area with special treatment is called Sima Swadantra. It is said that the figure of MPU Pilar awarded several regions as self-help Sima to participate in caring for sacred buildings in a manner called Jinalaya. The historian De Kasparis considers the figure of Rakai Patapan MPU Pilar to be the vassal king of Samaratunga. His full name is found in the Gandasuli inscription, namely Dang Karayan Patapan Septutar Rakai Patapan MPU Pilar Saitabusu Pelar. The inscription which mentions the term, kingdom. So, according to De Kasparis, MPU Pilar in that year broke away from Samaratunga's rule. De Kasparis also found that, in the Kedu inscription there was information about the village of Gunter which was part of the Tana Perdikan Garung area, as well as the Patapan area as an autonomous Sima area. On this basis, Rakai Patapan is considered identical to Sri Maharaja Rakai Garung in the list of kings according to the Mantyasi inscription. Pramodawardani, this name is summarized in the essence of the content of the Kayumbungan inscription, namely, Declaration of care for Kamulan Bumashambara by MPU Pilar or Samaratunga to Pramodawardani. By establishing Sima Swatantra, namely awarding several villages to care for Kamulan Bumashambara. The Shivagra inscription, the inscription with the number 778 Saka, was issued by Daya Lokapala after the end of Rakai Paikadan's reign. This inscription mentions a description of the group of sacred buildings dedicated to Lord Shiva. This inscription tells us that what is meant by the Aging Holy Building Group is those around Prambanan. So, it is clear that the building is designated for Lord Shiva. Shiva is a name that does not describe Buddhism. So it is clear that during the Pramodawardani period there were no signs or notes about the completion of Borobudur development. If it is true that Borobudur is considered to have been built at that time, of course there is an inscription that marks it. The presumption of Borobudur development stages by archaeologists. Archaeologists suspect that the original design of Borobudur was a single, enormous stupa crowning the top. 
It is suspected that the massive mass of this enormous and heavy stupa endangered the body and foot of the temple so that the architect of the Borobudur designer decided to dismantle this giant stupa and replace it with three rows of small stupas and one main stupa as it is today. Here we can understand that Borobudur is a pyramida with a stepped pundin shape, which is identical to pyramida. Around the world, this form is the basic form of Borobudur. The big note is, why is the bas-relief in Borobudur written 12 Svarga words? Closed. There is a possibility to eliminate or impose on the public that this Borobudur is based on Buddhism. When it is clear, the understanding of life after death in Buddhism is Nirvana or Nibbana. Not Svarga. Continues to section 13. By Santosaba.